Hello viewers, and welcome back to Darkest Dungeon. Uh, last time, we dispatched the necromancer, necromancer apprentice like he was Bone Rabble. This time, we're just gonna go, I don't know... Ooh, wow. So as you can see, the Nomad Wagon... Let me, let me interrupt my intro and talk about something else here. As you can see, the Nomad Wagon can provide really, really good stuff at times, but you need to save up quite a bit of gold to make any use of it. Is it at all feasible for us to buy this focus ring? Focus rings are so good. Uh, well, uh, let's liquidate some things. Honestly, you guys, I hope that you were not hoping to see me level a jester, because I really don't want to. They suck so much. The problem with the jester isn't that it's completely useless. Jesters do stuff. It's just that they are completely outclassed by other classes at everything they do. That started as kind of a defense of the idea of the jester, but uh, it's not how it ended. Alright, let's sell some... let's sell stuff that I don't actually want. I don't intend to ever use that. Uh, I don't think that's very good. As you can see, these trinkets really are worth quite a lot. 5% prot is such a small, like... That's only going to take one point of damage off of the vast majority of things that might hit you. Uh, that seems fine. That seems fine. This seems pretty weak. I don't care for that. That seems alright. This is fine. Mm, that seems weak, but the numbers on it are large enough that I'll, I'll hold on to it just in case I find a niche for it. So the answer is no, without unloading some stuff. Like, I could I could decide to sell one more of these trinkets and then buy that focus ring, but it would leave me absolutely no buffer, right? Like, these boots aren't great. So I sell these boots, get 1500 end up at 26 k then spend 25 k on uh, the focus ring, and end up barely able to outfit our next expedition and with no buffer in case things go wrong. Yeah, sadly, I think we're just going to have to let this focus ring... Well, hold on a second. I can lower the price of stuff, right? Maybe by as much as 20%, provided that this doesn't cost an insane number of crests. Yeah. Rarities and curios. Sold at a profit, of course. Okay. We're doing it. 6k is pretty, pretty low, but I think it's worthwhile to pick up another focus ring. These things are really good. Just 12 accuracy is just so much accuracy. Now, minus 8 dodge is pretty bad. I'm not going to lie to you. But uh, who needs to dodge when you kill everything before it has a chance to attack you? Alright, let's figure out what we're actually doing here. So... What do we need? We still need deeds, but sadly, the wield is all medium adventures. Wow, that one has a legendary bracer as a prize. We can't do that, right? No, we can't do that. All right, we're just going to have to let that go. Uh, as you can see, uh, double camp orange mission or double camp yellow missions provide orange trinkets as rewards. Very, very valuable. Uh, we're going to start to get. We're going to start getting reliably really good stuff as rewards for going on missions once we're doing the yellows. Uh, this is pretty good, I think. I don't know how badly we need busts. This is... That's okay. B getting surprised is not so bad with some lineups and is absolutely crippling with others. And it would be nice to be able to bring something like this when you bring one of those ladder types of parties. Uh, Steady Bracer is still just fine, and we always need crests. Plus, we gotta level the cove up. The cove is the lowest level area now. It's the only area where we haven't been able to see a boss yet. Alright, we're going to the cove. That was easy. And, hey, look at that. Our Plague Doctor is off, uh, off medical leave. Right at the right moment. I right, will level you up and you up. I think... 
that we'll go ahead and we'll bring this blasphemous vial, even though this mission's not terribly difficult, and I tend to leave valuable trinkets behind. Uh, in the in that case, it's just so good. It's so so good on him. I think Falaise is going to come with us. It's not that we need another bounty hunter. It's just that uh, we don't particularly need anything else to level up. Lots of our uh, we have pretty good representation. Most of our classes are at level two or above. The things that we don't uh, really have that option for are, you know, in the medical bay or. Or the jester, which is we're not do we're not doing that. I'm not going to su subject you guys to watching me play jester. All right, and that's for you. That's something I'm doing on your behalf. Boy, I sure hope we don't die here. We really have uh, we are not leaving ourselves a lot of wiggle room. We're not going to bring a key. Okay, 2675. Yeah, I tend not to bring valuable trinkets on non-critical missions, just in case. Something can always go wrong, right? And uh, if the person holding the valuable trinket dies, and then you are unable to finish that encounter, either because you all, because all of your party members die, or because you flee the encounter, you don't get their trinket back. It just stays there in the These encounter. These soaked caverns are teeming with pelagic nightmares. They must be flushed out. Pelagic nightmares. <sighs> okay. All right, game. Another mariner, another misfortune. That feels like the beginning of things spiraling out of control. Nope. We will not be fighting a shambler. Okay, we didn't even have to come over here. How disappointing. It's possible that the right play was to go up first to see if we got a scout like that one. Because walking back through the already explored hallways doesn't actually deplete our supplies by that much except that I guess we could get um, a whole bunch of hunger events it could cause us to take an extra hunger or two ooh that was bad luck mechanical hazards possessed by evil intent I forgot that he has minus 10 accuracy until the end of a quest from uh, from all that drinking he did last time we put him in town how much scouting do we get? Sadly, only one haul. Well, at least we won't be surprised by this battle. And an empty sack. We are not, uh, not... Not getting the things we wanted. Okay. Security shovel. I'm very happy about the extra shovel. Every time I have to use a shovel in the early going, I, I have flashbacks to that time that we, uh that we saw three shovels in, like, the first three hallways on that short mission. Okay, that was a good bunch of resists. I think we're just gonna try to stun this guy rather than blighting him. Because I really, really don't want him to get even one turn. <laughs> Alright, other party members finish the job. Alright. And these things are not terribly likely to go down, but it's possible. Nope. I wasn't even thinking about the dodge. They do have a significant amount of dodge. Ooh. Okay. I think it behooves him... Or sorry, her. Brad Wardine. To just use her uh, heal skill on herself to remove that bleed. That was a lot of points of bleed damage. And, uh... A proactive strategy for dealing with it, I think, is a good idea. All right, we stun one of them and burn the other one down as fast as we can. Unfortunately, uh, there was no situation where she was going to be able to shoot the relevant target. We're just going to blind fire. Let's see. That's pretty bad luck that we hit the corpse instead of either of the enemies. And then more dodges. These guys...
Six more bleed damage. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. I think that the bounty hunter and the man at arms can take care of this. So we're going to again proactively remove the bleed. Alright. Step one of take care of this is try the stun. Wow! That is three consecutive dodges on the bounty hunter's attack. And again with the corpse shooting on the blind fire. We're having some uh, some pretty bad luck here in the opening opening battle. For death by inches. That's a lot of crests though. That's pretty good. Especially considering that we're gonna get uh, six more crests, I believe, from the completion bonus. Oh, okay. Surprise! I'm very happy about that surprise. I have I've never been happier about a surprise round. It's possible that I should have just gone for control there, but oh, that's really unfortunate. Because we have to hit the madman. Which means this guy gets an actual turn. Oh, leave Brad Wardine alone! Uh, fortunately, we know the uh, Pelagic Groupers can't hit Brad Wardine. When they're in the front two rows, they only hit your front two rows. Uh, they do hit fairly hard, though. Man, why can Stress Wave sometimes target two people? So he's dead. He's got Lethal Blight on him. Let's just open up on these guys, of course. Uh, opening up is a lot more effective when you hit. Right, we're going to try to focus down with these three. We're going to try to focus down the front bad guy so that... Uh, so that the Arbalists will have something to shoot at when we get this kill. Not if, but when. Stun? No. We're getting dodged. Okay. Things have gone better. Alright, let's get you off of Death's Door. I'd really like for the Arbalest to go next. Okay, we can get a little bit of healing in, and then still go for the kill. You know what? He doesn't get he doesn't get a turn in the next round. We're just gonna delay into a next round and try to get some more healing done. All right, that was pretty good ordering. Right, we managed to recover 8 HP on him. But really, that was pretty bad for a battle that occurs so early in the, uh, in the dungeon. <sighs> okay, Stress Wave is not a big deal. At least not targeting him. Oh, please don't let that stun land. Okay, good. Damn! Everybody gets to go before us all the time. Is this another one of my low speed parties? One, one, seven, four. No, that this really this really just should not be happening. The plague doctor at the very least should be in with everybody else. Uh Alright. If we put a stun on this guy, he'll be very low on health before he's able to actually do anything again. And that allows us to use a real attack on the shaman and then miss that real attack. Oh, what a shame. Okay. Well, that problem's resolved, so both of those guys are dead. is the weapon that cuts on its own. At least they're spreading the damage out, you know. Ten. God damn. On the brink, facing the abyss. All right, guy, calm down. It's not. It's not that bad. It's not that bad yet. The slow death. On 
unforeseen. It's really, Flays is really overstating our predicament, I think. Ah, uh, but of course he goes before the healer. Uh, when a unit's on death's door, they receive uh, they receive s significant penalties, which means that he actually can't even get these kills. That being the case, we'll uh, th try to throw a stun out. We will not get it, but we will be able to get him off of death's door before the next turn. Alright, if the blight sticks, it did. That guy's dead now. Great. And that attack only does one damage, and I don't even care if it stuns. Okay, so we only have one enemy left. I am going to stun it instead of attacking it in an attempt to get uh, a little bit more healing. Sadly, the stun did not land. Let's try again. Nope, he dodged. It is impossible to hit these damn things. <laughs> it's just gonna re-stun him right away. Oh, crit. Yeah, we're letting ourselves take a look. Look, it's round four. It's round four and there's an enemy with full health. That's not so good. We let ourselves get attacked a lot of times there. Wow, three this Onyx. At least promises success. I don't know what to use here. Arbalus, you have the most health. You touch it. Okay. Huh. How many rooms do we have left? A lot. I mean, potentially a lot. We have no idea how many room battles are left or where they are. So my my I'm wondering where we want to camp basically. I think what I'm going to do is distribute a little bit of food, push on to the next room and see what see what happens from there. Wow. We are going to make so much money from all this onyx. <sighs> will find no clemency in this place. Let's go ahead and burn the torch. In fact, let's let's not let the light level down too much. I was really hoping to get a scout. That would have been nice. So how many torches do we have left? Five? That's sufficient. It would be cleanest if we could go down here, search, and then camp when we come back up. I think that's what we're going to go for, even though it's a little bit risky. Uh, okay, well that's... Is that the worst thing that could have happened? It may be the worst thing that could have happened. Oh, please don't land this. Oh, why? Okay. Fortunately, our Plague Doctor is still in a position to do her thing. She's going to be vital to us escaping this alive, if indeed that is even possible. Yeah, let's, let's do basically the thing we did last time. And then... Plague Doctor's in terrible shape. So if we move backward, we push the plague doctor out. Do we can we see Is there no way to see how they uh, how they move in combat from this screen? That seems like an oversight. Yeah, I think we're not going to move. I think we're going to blind fire. Okay, that was not the target I was hoping for, but uh, you know, it's blind fire. What are you going to do? If you choose to blind fire, you can't really be terribly upset about the outcome. Uh, so, hitting a stun or another blight, either one would kill this guy. Okay, so those guys are both dead. Freaking bounty hunter cannot catch a break back here. Okay, finally he did, as I said that. 
Oh, this can't target people in the front. Okay, that's good. And we'll just kill this thing straight up. And blind fire. One of these days, that's going to hit a target that matters. All right, the blight lands. This thing is in. Uh, this thing is in poor shape. We'll go for the stun. There's no point in moving him. He's not going to get another turn. All right. The blight is. <laughs> As victories mount, so too will resistance. Victory is a big word for what just happened there. Alright, so I'm happy about deeds, obviously. Um, and the actual events of that battle are almost unbelievable. <laughs> I cannot believe she still has not hit a single target of value with blind fire. She almost always hits a corpse if one is available. <laughs> uh, barnacle encrusted chest. Do we bandage our hands so they don't get cut up? No. Do we... Is it locked? Do we key it? No. Is the... Are the barnacles poisonous? Do we anti-venom? No. Nothing does anything. Okay, just open it. Nasty gash! What the hell? I... You would think if that's one of the outcomes that the bandage would be the thing to use on it. But apparently not. Okay. No monster battle. We're just gonna walk back up to this room and we're gonna camp. Oh, you did not even see anything, Brad. This adventure is not going so hot. I'm, not, I'm gonna level with you guys. A chance to steal oneself against the coming horrors. All right, so we got some wound care available. We might take advantage of tactics. Uh, 35% heal for three time costs seems pretty good. Uh, we're definitely going to have you self-medicate. Finally. We're going to field dress the bounty hunter's wounds. Okay, good. We got six units left. Do we need to spend it all on wound care? I'd like to restring her crossbow. Do I have anything that costs one? No. So it could be restring crossbow and tactics and just kind of leave everybody floating a little over half health. Yeah, I didn't want to do that. Lady really loves her crossbow. So my thinking there is, as usual, just like getting the job done faster is going to save a lot more health than actually raising our health. The darkness holds dominion. Ah, uh, all right. Well, it's not a terribly difficult fight. At least this is this could be a lot worse. Started on this guy right away. Screw him. Oh, please don't land that stun. That's. Okay, that would be a bad guy to get stunned right now. I think we just have to lay on the damage. I have to not. Uh... His bleed resist is too high. I'm gonna go ahead and jump all the way as far forward as possible here. Alright, so he's dead. I'm gonna focus on this guy now. Alright, please don't hit the thrall. Should I just back to? I should just back to. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. A hundred percent certain that was gonna hit the thrall. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Bounty Hunter cannot catch a break. 
This would prevent 10 damage from occurring. It's not as proactive as I like to be. No, it's probably better to just have the Bounty Hunter use our last bandage on his turn. He'll take two of the damage. But I think we really gotta... We really gotta focus on getting these kills. Okay, we have to do... We have to do one more damage to him. Alright. He's not likely enough to kill the Deep Stinger, I think. So let's focus on this guy. He only has a 58% chance to hit. How messed up is his accuracy? Right, he's blinded, he's got double vision and also the death door. Yeah. Alright, well, better than a coin flip. No such luck. Fortunately, our Arbalist can actually aim at stuff now. Alright. Yeah, of course you get to go first. You... Seven's pretty fast. I do not like these jellyfish. Alright. All that guy needs is a little little love tap. We just gotta do four to him to prevent him from getting a turn. Yeah, that'll that'll work. As the light gains purchase, spirits are lifted. Okay. The purpose is made clear. Four more rooms at most. I feel really good about having a safety shovel. I'm really glad we found that. Okay, loot. I do feel like I've been complaining a little bit this mission, and I don't want to sound like, oh, the game's cheating me. You know, I don't. I don't think that the game is being unfair. I think I'm just. Uh, just feeling a little cranky. Okay. I got the initial damage in on this. This is a this is a tough one. Because you really want this guy to die before the guardian has a chance to use his guard, right? A guarded shaman is one of the most frustrating things in the, you can possibly deal with in the low, the low level cove. But also there's the possibility that the guardian would guard the thrall, and that would just be that would be backbreaking. So really, our options for controlling that are we can try to stun the Guardian, prevent him from guarding anyone. Or we can just try to burn the Thrall down with these two. You have to remember that she can't necessarily attack the Thrall. Ah, well, burn down plan is off the table. Let's get a stun. Okay. And I think she's just going to shoot... Yeah. Her other option was to blind fire and just pray to hit the Thrall, and that seems like a pretty poor plan to me. So this coming turn, we just have to lay it on the Thrall as hard as possible. We do not want him getting a second turn. The second turn is where things go wrong. Alright, so, first things first. That's six. We are, in fact, going to take advantage of blind fire here. Uh, that was the lowest value target again, but it was a crit. I'm not going to throw a temper tantrum about a crit. Come on. Alright, you got to get him for eight. Awesome. And right before his turn as well. Alright. We actually have an opportunity here to use Retribution. That uh, barnacle barrier is going to be insufficient, but sadly, he does get a fair amount of prot from doing it. But at least we can get that blade up. Yeah, you can see our attacks not doing exactly what we would hope through the blight or through the uh, guard. Never mind, that attack did exactly what we wanted. This momentum. Push on to the task's end. Oh, hey, we got one of these things. Who's got a bad trait? Scattering? That's not really relevant. Ah, okay. Trelly. Pour some holy water on this thing. 
wield foam. That's not uh, that's not the one we were hoping to remove. Huh? Anti venom. Okay, a small heal. Thank you, safety shovel. That was a very lucky find. Alright, I feel confident now that we are actually going to complete this dungeon. There was a... there were a, mi a couple of minutes there where I was really concerned. Alright, we got two battles in quick succession here, and that might be the end of the dungeon, honestly. We still have 12 food left. So I think that was a reasonable thing to do. Damn it, Plutomania. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter here. But still, I'm annoyed by the fact that it ha that's, uh, it's on him. Only three of them is good. That's a great dodge. It's hard to know how many of the dodges are due to the training skill that we use during camp. But I like to imagine they all are. And that we're just getting crazy, crazy value. Oh, that's a shame. Perhaps you. Alright, good enough. That guy's dead. And we will stun one of these dudes. Okay. If we play our cards right, we're only going to get attacked one more time this entire combat. That double vision is really working him over. Okay, so that was lethal. Stuns and bleeds play very well together. And there it is. That's playing our cards right, right there. The battle is now basically over in our favor. Hey, you. Have a point of healing. Of course, as always, I was also hoping for a crit there. Get some stress relief. Pride precipitates a dizzying fall. I think we're actually in better shape at the end of that combat than we were at the beginning. Oh, they're so fast. It's uh, stress casters. Right. Pretty standard blights for everybody. I wonder if it would be worth not focusing so much on the guys in the back and just allowing the Plague Doctor to um, stun them. At the beginning of the, the, uh, the next turn. Even though this guy's actually more dangerous, I stunned that guy because the stun has a knockback component and I didn't want to hit this guy and knock him uh, back so that she would come forward. Because that doesn't really jibe with my plan of maybe just stunning them all. And letting him, watching them blight to death. Right. So he's still going to need to be hit again. But we're taking very few attacks here. Alright, let's uh, finish this guy off. Fortuitous. Put a little bit more damage on him. Is that... yes, that is sufficient. Ah, uh, That would have been absolutely perfect if that stun had landed. Alright, so all we have to deal with now is probably one seaward slash from this guy. Uh, unless we can get a stun. Okay. Well, I feel confident that the battle is uh, over. Yeah. Over with gusto, in fact. These nightmarish creatures can be felt. They can be beaten. Alright, well, let's go do this hallway real quick, because there's no good reason not to. Ooh. Uh 
Hard noggin. Okay, that's pretty great. I was going to do that with the bounty hunter in hopes of a little bit of stress relief, but maybe he can relieve some stress by disarming this trap. Awesome. Uh, yeah, from 42 to 34, that puts him in pretty good place, actually. At last, wholesome marine life can flourish. If indeed there is such a thing. It's true, all fish are evil, and I know that because I've seen several episodes of the old Flipper TV show. So, lots of crests. Uh, quite a few deeds. That's very lucky. We are definitely, definitely still in need of deeds. Lots of money. Over, over 11,000 gold there. Which is uh, especially good since we ran ourselves down to basically nothing. We're, we're recovering nicely already. You answered the letter. Now, like me, you are a part of this place. Alright, we, uh, we had some bad luck on that mission toward the beginning, but we managed to recover pretty well with uh, just basic good play. Stay aggressive, limit the number of times the enemy gets to attack you, uh, that sort of stuff. So we, <laughs> we're still taking care of the, the diseases that we allowed to build up through a little bit of carelessness earlier. He just has rabies. That's fine. I'm going to let him have rabies. He has vertigo. I don't really care about that. Somebody else had something really bad. Yeah, Bry did. That's right. Okay. Bry. Get that taken care of. Unfortunately, Bry being in the thing, uh, probably... Well, this party is not amazing. It's very aggressive. I suppose that it's amazing in that way. I do love an aggressive party. A sharper sword, a stronger shield, anything to prolong a soldier's life. That's right. We take care of our soldiers here. Because we have invested significant real world time in getting them XP. And to allow them to die now would be basically admitting that I have nothing better to do. And I'm not saying that that's not true, but I am saying that I'm not willing to admit it. So... We still have quite a few people who've never even left the hamlet. And when you recruit a hero, they come into your employ with 20 stress. As you can see, these guys have been sitting for so long that they've all completely lost all of that starting stress. Nothing exciting. I don't even know what we would be looking for at this point. Nomad wagon trinkets are fine but unimpressive, especially considering that we already have two flash fire gunpowder. We don't have enough crests to upgrade the wagon size. That's fine. We should probably build up a little bit of a stockpile before we even think about buying anything again, especially considering that we don't have just a huge pile of sellable trinkets to trade in for something good so I think that's gonna wrap it up for this episode let's have a look real quick we have in fact unlocked the first boss of the cove the captivating siren uh, what is this minus 20% stress damage okay that's fine it makes a crusader very hard to stress out and stress damage is of course my least favorite thing in the game so that might well be worth doing next time. Or we could get a dark tambourine. Man, that doesn't sound cool at all. I don't know if there's a less cool word to put after dark than tambourine. Maybe accordion? Everything about the jester sucks so much. And well, come back next time when we still don't fight the swine prince.